This is the 2019 Solid Mechanics and FEA exam and this is question 3 which is a question about bending. Um, you can see pretty quickly it's a question about bending just by looking at the figures. We've got this simply supported beam which has got a load so it's going to bend and we can see it's going to have some kind of cross section that we're going to have to work out some details of. So uh, let's start on that uh, question 3 a and 3a says determine the position of the neutral axis and the second moment of area of the cross section right the cross section looks like this um, and immediately what I'm gonna do is divide that up into two regions um, So I'll say think of it as one rectangle that looks like this and one rectangle that looks like this. And I'll call this rectangle one and this rectangle two. Um, OK, that's good. And then what I'm going to do is set this to be uh, y equals zero. And that's positive y in that direction. So those are the things that are going on. And I guess I can say this center of this rectangle, it's not very clearly drawn, is about there, and the center of this one is about there. We'll need to worry about those centers. Um, what I'm working towards here is calculating I, the uh, second moment of area. But to do that, we need um, to understand the geometry pretty well so I'm just going to work out some geometry terms first. Um, A1 equals, um, well actually let's go right back, um, y1 equals the height of y is what's called h1 in this problem and that's 90 millimeters and I'm going to write everything in meters straight away because it saves any problems with unit conversions later. Uh, x1 the width so that's my x direction if it matters um, and the width of section 1 is what's called T in this problem, and that's 25 millimetres. That's 0 0.025 metres. Divide by 1,000 to go from millimetres to metres. Uh, that means combining those A1 equals X1 times Y1, the width times the height for a rectangle. Um, and I can put that straight into a calculator. 2.25 times 10 to the minus 3 square meters. So we've got that. Uh, now we can go on and do, I'll move a bit to the left since I run out of room there, but y2 is the height of rectangle 2. Um, I guess that's h1 minus h in this problem, or sorry, h minus h1. Um, and that is 120 minus 90 millimetres, which is 30 millimetres, which is 0 0.03 metres. And x2 is marked as B in this problem, and that is 80 millimetres, which in turn equals 0 0.08 metres. And so we can work out that A2, the area of rectangle 2, is X2, Y2, which is 2.4 times 10 to the minus 3 square meters. So we've got the two areas involved. Um, The next thing I want to work out is the height of the centers of these two rectangles. Um, I'll call that YC1. Um, that's the height of the center of rectangle 1. And that's the height of rectangle 2, uh, which is, we know, 0 0.03, plus a half the height of rectangle 1 which is 0 0.09 and that comes out to be 0 0.075 meters. 
Uh, that's that height there. And similarly, we want YC2. And that is um, just a half of the height of rectangle 2. So that's 0 0.015 meters. Um, and that is all the geometry we have to do. Uh, just one thing to note, it might have been easier if I hadn't used y1 and x1, y2 and x2 here. Um, typically we might use y1 and y2 to talk about the height of the centers and so you may see them written in um, in the formula for calculating the neutral axis at times. I think the thing to take away is you need to understand not just memorizing the formula but knowing what the bits in the formula actually mean because the terminology you're given normally I'd have used h1 for the height of these rectangles but that's already specified elsewhere in the problem. Um, so I've had to change my terminology around. So let's work out the height of the neutral axis um, I'll call this neutral axis, just so I'm being clear about what's going on. Y bar equals uh, YC1 A1 plus YC2 A2 all divided by A1 plus A2. We can put these numbers in. 0.075, uh, 2.25, uh, 2.25 times 10 to the minus 3 plus... 0.015, 2.4 times 10 to the minus 3, all over 2.25 times 10 to the minus 3, plus 2.4 times 10 to the minus 3. And I'll put all of that into a calculator. And that comes out to be 0.044 meters, pretty close to bang on, uh, which is 44 millimeters. And at this stage, you just want to check, does that answer make sense? Well, you'd expect it to be in between uh, the two dots I've drawn on this rectangle because... Um, those are the kind of centers, uh, the, the neutral axes of the individual parts. The neutral axis of the total thing is going to be some average of those two, is a way of thinking about it. Um, and uh, that's fine, 44 millimeters is indeed sort of in between those two values. So I'm pretty happy with that. Um, next, that's part of part A done. The next thing that we're asked for is the second moment of area. Uh, let's do two calculations for the second moment of area. We'll just calculate the second moment of area for rectangle 1, and that's going to be its own second moment of area about its own neutral axis. That's always... sorry, i move this up so you can see it. Uh, that's always bh cubed over 12 for a rectangle, plus a d squared, that's the parallel axis theorem. So this is on the data sheet. This isn't, you have to remember that, but the reason is that things are happening about a different axis to the center of that rectangle itself. Uh, so breadth here is 0.025, h is uh, 0.09, A is 2.25 times 10 to the minus 3, and D is uh, the, well, the difference between the neutral axis of the part and the neutral axis of the whole. So it's 0 0.075 minus 0 0.044, and that's squared in the problem. And that should give us a number. Again, I'm just going to try and fit all of this onto this page so you can see what's going on. Um, so I get 1.52 times 10 to the minus 6. 
plus two point one six times ten to the minus six. And that comes out to be 3.68 times 10 to the minus 6 meters to the 4. Uh, that's the I value for the for rectangle 1. Uh, same thing for rectangle 2. Uh, it's going to be exactly the same kind of formula. BH cubed divided by 12 plus AD squared, which in this case equals um, 0.08 times 0 0.03 cubed divided by 12 plus 0 I'm just putting all of this in and then I'll explain it um, so the distance from the overall neutral axis, which is somewhere at 44 millimetres, to the neutral axis of this part is the 44 millimetres minus the 15 millimetres. Um, and that comes out, uh, because we're squaring it, it doesn't matter whether we do, which way around we do it. If, it, if we did 0 0.015 minus 0 0.044 and then squared it, we'd get the same answer. Um, so I'm not too fussed which way around I do that. OK, I can put all of this into my calculator now. And that first term comes out to be 1.8 times 10 to the minus 7. And the second term comes out to be 2.02. times 10 to the minus 6 and so that total is 2.20 times 10 to the minus 6 meters to the 4 and so the total I value for the section is I for the first rectangle plus I for the second rectangle and that's 3.68 times 10 to the minus 6 plus 2.20 times 10 to the minus 6 and that's going to be 5.88 times 10 to the minus 6 meters to the 4. Okay so quite a lot of work there for the first six marks I guess. That's a page and a half or 13 minutes depending on um, how you look at it. The good news about this question is now we've done the the bit that's kind of work heavy or writing heavy now we're into the understanding heavy bits of it um, so part b says determine the maximum tensile stress and maximum compressive stress due to the force acting on the b maybe so we need to just change color so it's clear we're doing something new um, we need to just look at this problem on its own for a second. Uh, that's on rollers. That's kind of fixed. And there's a force there, P, and it's a distance of D from the end, and the whole thing has length L. Um, this is sort of a first year statics question to begin with. Uh, so we need to work out the support reactions. Um, let's call, uh, it's already on the problem that this is A and this is B. If we do vertical equilibrium, we get that the reaction at A plus the reaction at B, the two forces pointing upwards at A and B, um, they have to balance out the force P. And if I take moments about A, clockwise. In fact, uh, it's going to be slightly easier just because of where D is specified. I can see it's going to work a bit better if I take moments about B, because then 
uh, instead of using 1 minus d to work out the distance to here, I can just use d itself. I'll have one less term. It would work fine if you did it the other way. Um, so now I can say, OK, this is a force pushing upwards. So it causes a clockwise rotation. Um, so it's positive in my notation. So RA times L, that's a force times a distance. This force causes an anti-clockwise rotation. So minus P times D equals uh, zero. Those are the only two forces causing moments about B and the whole thing isn't rotating so they must balance. And then that tells me that RA equals PD over L. And then I guess I can say um, if this is equation one and this is equation two and I put together one and two then I'll get um, P times D over L plus RB equals P so therefore RB equals P times 1 minus D over L um, just checking that in my head um, that gives me P uh, P times D over L plus P minus p times d over l equals p so i think everything's matching up there sorry again that's gone out of shot at the bottom uh, i hope that's clear what i've done but basically we've calculated ra and rb in terms of um, uh, p d and l the other three things in the problem uh, next up I need to think about the method of sections because what we want to do is calculate the um, shear stress and bending moment throughout the beam. That's just, uh, I, I guess, going to be helpful. Um, we don't really need the shear stresses, but since I'm, cal since I'm starting, I might as well keep going with that. So if I think of the region from A to P, uh, that's what I'm going to consider first and we draw a section um, and I think I draw a shear stress like that and a bending moment like that and we've got a force there of RA which we know is P times D over L and this length here is X to our cut then we can say using vertical equilibrium V, the shear force, must be, um, I'm afraid I can't remember whether I've got the sign convention right for shear force, but we'll stick. I think it should be the other way. I'm going to say it should go that way. Um, if I'm wrong, we'll just have a negative sign throughout in the wrong place. Um, as long as I marked up my diagram OK, it'll still be clear. But I'm going to say V, the shear force, must be PD over L. Those are the only two vertical forces in the problem. Uh, taking moments about the, the place I've made my cut, um, we get PD over L multiplied by X is a positive uh, moment minus M, which is a negative moment equals zero. So M equals P D over L X. And now we'll do the second region of the beam from uh, P to B. Um, a couple of ways of doing this. I could do it starting from the right hand side of the beam. I like to just stick to one um, direction. So I'm going to keep going on exactly the same kind of thing as I had before. Uh, right, uh, this is P, this is still PD over L. Um, and now we need to mark on some directions. This is 
x and in fact what we're really saying let's be clear that distance there is x and that distance there is x it's the distance from the left hand end to our cut uh, this distance here is 1 minus d which means this distance here is x minus 1 minus d is x plus d minus 1. Um, okay, vertical equilibrium, the shear force here, um, V, okay, let's do forces acting upwards, P, D over L, uh, equals forces acting downwards, P plus V, so therefore V equals um, P, D over L minus P, which is that. Um, and the moment calculation, I need to keep my wits about me here, we've got um, this is a clockwise moment about we're taking moments about this point this causes a clockwise moment PD over L multiplied by X minus P multiplied by X plus D minus 1 minus M equals 0 M equals P D over L X minus P X plus P D minus P. And there may be some way I can uh, simplify that, I guess. Um, but <laughs> they might not. Um, okay, where have we got to? I know the numbers for all of these things. Um, and I think the other thing that I can say, I know this is going to... Uh, the, the slightly um, tricky thing here is what we're really going to be interested in is where is the maximum moment and you might just be able to guess or you might know um, the maximum moment will typically occur underneath the load we can see that this value increases linearly with x um, and this value if you work it out what you'll find if i've got my calculations right uh, the moment diagram should um, be a continuous diagram and there should be zero moment at either end of the beam because they're free to rotate um, and when I put together my understanding of moment diagrams I get this um, diagram here uh, this is um, L minus D this is L this is x and this is the moment and the maximum value of the moment comes when x equals l minus d um, so we can say therefore the moment equals we can use this equation up here p d over x multiplied by l minus d which equals p d l oh sorry uh, um, let's try <laughs> try that again x equals l minus d so we substitute that in here so uh, I was just writing nonsense there m equals p d over l multiplied by L minus D um, and I guess I can simplify that by multiplying through so that'll be P D and these two L's will cancel minus P D squared on L 
that's the maximum moment okay and now we're ready to go with generally solving the problem um, we can start putting numbers into that m max equals uh, p d minus p d squared on l which equals um, 6200 that's p multiplied by I'll just note that I can take out a factor of uh, yeah okay let's do it this way p d multiplied by 1 minus d over l so that is 6200 times 1.25 multiplied by 1 minus 1.25 over 3.2 and that comes out to be 4723 newton meters by my calculator um, I guess that makes sense. This will be a number a bit less than one. That sort of all. Uh, I'm, I'm okay with that. Um, now we um, can do most of the problem using the bending moment diagram. Uh, sorry, the um, the bending equation. M over I equals sigma over Y. So sigma max equals m max y max over i um, just going back and looking at the problem I guess we're being told that this is the orientation of the beam so the um, horizontal bit of it is towards the bottom um, that means it's going to bend uh, get my ruler out it's going to bend like this under the load P which means the top of it will be in compression and the bottom of it will be in tension so just drawing it out uh, this is max um, compression and this is the point of maximum tension and uh, that's the neutral axis that's 0.044 and that distance there must be h minus 0.044 which equals 0.076 um, so we'll do this in turn we know m max we now know y max that's the distance from the neutral axis to the furthest point uh, let's do uh, compression sigma max equals 4723 that's the maximum moment um, uh, multiplied by 0 0.076 that's the distance to the point from the neutral axis to the point of maximum compression divided by i which we calculated earlier on is 5.88 times 10 to the minus 6 which comes out to be 61 megapascals on my calculator Again, just a quick check. Is that a reasonable number for a stress in a loaded beam? Yes, I guess it is. Um, if I was getting a number which was 0 0.61 pascals or 61 times 10 to the 25, I'd be worried about those things, but this isn't the problem. Um, similarly, tension, sigma max equals 4723 times 0 0.044, distance from neutral axis to point of maximum tension divided by i the same i as before uh, 
and that comes out to be 35 uh, megapascals. I've rounded both of those to the nearest megapascal. I guess you could leave it in one more decimal place if you wanted to. Okay, uh, that's good. So that's part B complete. Those are the maximum tensile and compressive stresses. Uh, the last part says um, um, what's the maximum, what's the value of D for which tensile and compressive stresses are largest? Well, that's when the moment is largest. Remember that the moment was PD minus PD squared over L. Um, now what we want to do is find the value of D which maximizes M, so that's a differentiation problem, dM by DD in this case, sorry about the weird notation, equals P minus 2 PD over L and that equals 0 at a maximum um, which means that P equals 2 PD over L which means that uh, divide through L equals 2 D I'm rearranging this reasonably quickly which means that D equals L on 2 and that's not a huge surprise that the maximum moment comes when we load the beam exactly halfway along where the load is then furthest from any support. Um, there's kind of an intuitive um, feeling to that. In that case, uh, M equals uh, PL on 2 minus PL on 2 squared over L that is L squared on 4 and when I divide it by L I'll get L on 4 so that equals PL on 2 minus PL on 4 which equals PL on 4 uh, let me just sort of double check that L squared on 4 divided by L is PL on 4 yes that's fine so the answer is PL on 4 um, and we can calculate that. That's uh, 6,200 times 3.2 divided by 4. Which is 4,960 uh, Newton meters. Um, so we've got... Let's just make some notes. The max uh, moment comes when the load is in the middle. And the maximum moment is four nine six zero. Oh. And then we can finish off by calculating the stresses. That's the last thing we need to do. Um, and that's the same calculation we've just done, but with a slightly different moment. Sigma max is going to be 4960 times 0 0.076 over 5.88 times 10 to the minus 6. Uh, 64.1 megapascals and in tension the maximum stress equals 4960 times uh, 0 0.044 divided by 5.88 times 10 to the minus 6 And that's 37.1 megapascals. And those are the maximum stresses in that beam uh, when the load is positioned so the moment is maximum as well. 
Um, so that's the kind of calculation you might have to do if you're designing a simple bridge or something like that, um, showing that um, you can move the load across the bridge, finding that the maximum moment occurs when the load is in the middle of the bridge, and then designing the bridge to be strong enough based on that. Um, and that's how you do that kind of a bending question.